Alright lads, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Tom Harlock and I don't have an intro. And if I'm honest, I don't think you bloody deserve one. You've got no manners, no morals, and it makes me feel sick. Fortunately, I know just the chap to help you out. This is Darman. We're not just telling stories, we're changing lives. And when you share my videos, you're helping to change lives too. With billions of views, Dar is best known for his inspirational videos. If you've watched one Dar video, you sit a ball. Hey, get that back, I'm gonna lose. You're never gonna make anything of your life if you just sit here doing this all day. Someone gets bullied by someone, and then someone gets something. As time goes on, more people start to find out about him and his views keep going up. Eventually, he starts getting really popular. Since 2018, Dar has uploaded thousands of YouTube videos and gained millions of subscribers thanks to his winning formula. Terrible acting, an outlandish storyline, and a very vague moral woven throughout. I don't understand. You're so shy. How did you make it as a YouTuber? I just realized being shy is a superpower. Lessons on just being yourself may be well-intentioned, but have resulted in Dar being crowned the king of scripted cringe. No, oh, I thought I was weird at that one. And credit where it's due, Matey Boy has a good setup. Dar uploads daily skits, which get dubbed, repackaged, and spunked across a web of international channels. God, imagine me in eight different languages. I can barely stand myself in one. <laughs> Dar's tenacity has led to New York Times naming him YouTube's moral philosopher. But the current hasn't always been smooth for Dar's swim to the top. In the early 2010s, Dar was embroiled in suspected fraudulent activities when he was accused of misusing government funds. Years before his YouTube success, in the early 2010s, Dar launched We Grow, a hydroponics retailer focused on supplying equipment to cultivate the fattest bud. The franchising system just seeks to work with really motivated individuals who are interested in getting involved. Earning a reputation as a entrepreneur. God, I'd end it all. Dar set out to build the Walmart of weed. To date, we've received about a thousand applications for interested franchisees. We're gonna be opening up a store in DC soon and then expanding into New Jersey, Oregon, Colorado, and Michigan over the next few months. But the higher you get, the further you have to fall. And Dar was twatting every branch on the way down. Alongside we grow, Dar also managed an array of rental properties. Shocker, he's a landlord. And in 2011, was accused of sending government funds intended for property renovations straight into his own bank. Pleading guilty to multiple felonies, Dar was fined, sent to five years probation, and ordered to never have a nice haircut ever again. After the ruling, it didn't take long for WeGrow to go up in smoke, with all four locations closing in early 2011. Despite Dar's growing list of failed ventures, he wasn't giving up that easy. And in 2018, Darman Studios was launched. The early uploads were mainly Dar just chatting shit to the camera, but as time went on, he developed a little style. And it was his short, wholesome skits that became his bread and butter. Dar uses the same actors to play different characters across various videos, so you do have to suspend your belief when the homeless lass from last week is suddenly a neurosurgeon, but... I guess the target demographic is eight-year-olds, and I'm not sure if you've ever spoken to a child, but they are pretty thick. Over the years, he's developed his studios into a giant production. Hey, Darman fam. So you see, we're standing here in our brand new studio where we're currently building out all of our new film sets that we're going to be recording in. Utilizing sound stages in Burbank and collaborating with some of the biggest names on the platform. My dad got me the wrong phone on my birthday. Can you believe it? Well, there's a lot of people that don't get anything for their birthday. So you should be grateful for what you have. Whatever, no one cares about your opinion. Uh, well, yeah, they do actually. That's a, a, a sniper wolf. She's got millions of subscribers. And a big fat ass. So I think we're supposed to like her, but if I'm honest, I can't stand the bin. All she does is rob videos and wear fake glasses. Complimenting his main YouTube channel, Dar is a family vlogger. Obviously. Is anyone not a family vlogger? Does anyone have kids and not make money off them? I've had eight children and you lot wouldn't even know. Mainly because they're buried in the floor. I'm so joking. 
they're in the walls. Hey guys, it's Dar. And I'm Laura. And we're back again with another vlog. Alongside partner Laura, Dar documents his perfect life. And yeah, they're about as cheesy as you can imagine. Come on in, baby girl. I love you so much. Morphine's kicking in. There's nothing worse than these family channels that pretend they're doing it for the kids. Well, we wouldn't pick up the camera if they didn't ask. They're six months old. The only thing they're asking for is to suck your tit and shit the pants. We're making memories! No, you're not. You're exploiting your kids for financial gain. Just say how it is and I might respect you. Well, I won't, but it would be funny to hear you admit it. But despite Dar's videos preaching a message of kindness and humanity, apparently behind the scenes he's a massive arsehole. Word on the streets is he's threatening a lot of people with cease and desist and scaring all the actors. Bad move. Earlier this year, a group of ex Starman actors, unhappy with their working conditions, began a revolution. There are a lot of issues at hand here, but uh, one of the main issues is that not a single actor that works at Diamond Studios can afford rent. Posting a TikTok that received 1 million likes, the numbers on that app aren't real and one day I'll burst that bubble. Actor Colin A. Borden blew the whistle. According to Colin, despite being with Dar since the start, the shitty pay made it impossible to live and the harsh working environment meant you couldn't speak out. Everybody feels the same across the board. The trouble is uh, there is a culture at the studio of if you talk, you're out. The main issue was hourly pay. Actors would be booked for several days at a time, but only used for a few hours. A typical industry solution is a day rate, but Darwin agreed to this. Banding together, a group of ex Darman actors requested various changes, starting with a meeting attended by Dar. There are a lot of reasons why we're protesting, but the main one being we asked for a meeting with Dar because we were unhappy with the way we were being treated here at Darman Studios. Unfortunately, he told them to swivel. In a statement released on Instagram, Dar said the meeting request was denied due to the protesters' spread of misinformation. According to Dar, they got paid great. They're moaning about nothing. But for the actors, this wasn't good enough. They felt disrespected and like they had no other choice than to kick off. If you're going to profit off of these morals, you need to at least give the people that are working underneath them the respect of what you're preaching. Taken to the streets, the actors were met with huge online support, with many encouraging them to start their own production company to rival Dars. You lot are the stars! Take your talent onwards and upwards and we'll support you. Well, for about a week. Thank you guys for being really, really patient. Right now, we are filming some of our Indiegogo contributors' content. So thank you guys to everybody who donated to our campaign. Crowdsourcing via Indiegogo, six ex Darman actors raised £10,000 to begin their own web series. Together as a group, we're creating a show called Good Works. With an E in there because we're quirky. Or quirky. Like, I don't know. We... We thought it was funny. And just two weeks after the protest began, Good Works Productions was launched. Scene one, episode one, Highway to Redemption. Take one. With thousands of supportive comments, everything was looking great for Good Works. Until they started posting the videos. Jeez, just go find yourself a buddy or I will write you up and I swear next time I'm gonna make sure you do your community service at Maple Grove and I swear you do not want that, okay? Ciao. The concept was simple. A group of mismatched freaks attend community service and the videos, in the nicest possible way, were absolutely shit. Ooh, that is a crop topper, no cap. Uh, well, I know I'm getting on a bit, but what the fuck does that even mean? The viewers did try to stick around for the first few episodes, but by month two, even the cast had given up, and I don't blame them. Each video was part of a bigger story, so unless you accidentally stumbled across the first one, absolutely nothing made sense. And even if you did watch it in order, like I put myself through, Jesus, but I felt like I was doing community service myself. What? Police. Michelle with, with, with squad cars and handcuffs on their way to our house currently. I feel bad saying it because they clearly did put a lot of effort into the entire shebang, but you'd been better off taking fistfuls of that cash and just shoving it up your ass. At least someone would have had a good time. But where good works flopped, 
many others have triumphed. The success of Dar has led to a litter of copycats. One such channel is Samia Bavnani, who has somehow lowered the bar of moral lessons straight into hell. Which is about five floors that way. Wow, you're, you're really smart. I am strong at math. I told you the only quality besides my autism. What? No. And you're so handsome too. Don't let it get to your head. You're better than many of my students. Samia's channel, with over 1 million subscribers, teaches valuable lessons such as Autistic student claps teacher gets her pregnant. I don't know how to tell you. But hiding this will only make my anxiety worse. Alex, I'm, I'm pregnant. And the timeless classic, Bully tries Mortal Kombat Fatality on Nerd, then this happens. And if you're wondering what the this that happens is, meet Terry. Your mommy dropped you as a baby? No, I was born with this condition. Hey Wheeler, that condition stop you from brushing your teeth? A teenage tearaway with limp locks and an even limper spine. Mom. Am I allowed to say that? I feel like he's not really disabled, so it's all right, but let me know in the comments, will you? And I might change my vernacular, <sighs> or I might double down. In just under 10 minutes, we're told the tale of Terry finally overcoming his bullies by accidentally having his spina bifida cured. Using karate moves, which he learned during a summer boot camp hosted by a violent janitor. Here's a tense storyline, I'll give him that. Stop your crying and get up, Terry. I can't. Get up, Terry. Master Allen, what the heck? How dare you do this to my child? I did watch the whole thing and I'm not quite sure what makes Tez a massive nerd other than having a disability. So I guess if you're watching this in a wheelchair, you're a giant loser, ha <laughs> ha. I truly want to thank everyone who keeps watching these videos. I hope you get a positive message out of them. Uh, what message may that be, mate? Don't beat up the disabled because you may accidentally align their spine. That's my evening plans out the window. Oh, Samir, you little scamp. I should have known you weren't to be trusted when I read your about section. Young filmmaker? Yeah, and I'm five foot two and radiate joy. I'm actually six foot one and full of hate. <laughs> oh! Oh my god. Sadly, it's not just Samia who seems to have their wires crossed. YouTube channel Tomorrow's Teaching is another dark clone with lessons we could all learn from, such as Karen makes Indian take bath. Don't make me scrub the brown off of you too. <laughs> And who could forget family favourite? Hot mum takes autistic son's winky pick. You won't believe it. You know what? I don't think I will. Last month I was here, he was normal. Jack didn't have his seatbelt on. In this one, we meet Jack, who has developed autism after a road traffic accident. Jack was sitting in the middle street and flew out of the front windshield, landed straight on his head. I'm so sorry to hear that. I... I'm glad he survived. Jack's mum is riddled with Munchausen's via proxy and uses a photo of her teenage son's tiny knob as a means to blackmail him into acting disabled so she can get free rent. <laughs> Does that actually work? So I feel like I could probably get a discount. <laughs> you say a word, I will send this to your friends and they will know how small it is. <gasps> no. Fortunately, Lass has an epiphany. During a nightmare, Jack is gobbled by a bunch of zombies, and suddenly she sees the error of her ways. <sighs> Jack! Jack! Oh, do I have to act autistic right now? No, no, no. I thought I lost you. What? I I'm so sorry for everything. Well, thank God for that, eh? You'll never have to act again. Evidently, not everybody has the Darman magic. You just can't compete with the originals. So, I thought it would be a grand idea to cap out this video by popping in my AirPods and cracking open a Darman classic to see just how shite the source material really is. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. We'll go with something topical and popular. Rich kid makes fun of poor kid's Halloween costume. Yeah, why not? I love a bit of bullying. <laughs> 
The Halloween costume contest is tonight. All right, well, if the contest is tonight, you've got at least five hours to wash that air. Are you entering? No, I don't have enough money for a costume. You don't need money. You could just make a costume like me. Oh well, yeah, you don't need money, but it's gonna look shit, love. Let's be honest. I'm gonna be a hot air balloon. And hey, you got my jacket wet, Beth. I'm so sorry, Vicky. Do you know how expensive this is? No, but I'm sure you're gonna tell me. This is a $300 designer jacket that my dad got me. You're obviously too poor to know that. All right, well, your dad got mugged off there, love. It looks like it's from Timu. Wait. That bag. I need it for the costume I'm making for tonight's contest. You want my trash? Ew. This is nerve wracking. And I think it passes the Beckdale test. You really want this? You can get it off the garbage. Beth the bum. I know we're supposed to root for the poor lass, but the bully's just got more personality. Oh, Beth the bum. Don't play into her hands. Well, got the first part of what I need. Oof, brave girl touching that mop. Well, well, well. If it isn't Beth the Bum herself. Oh no, Beth's gonna get jumped in the car park. Run, poor gal, run! I just picked up something I needed for my costume. Don't tell me you shop at the dollar store. Oh yeah, she's poor as anything, love. You keep going on about it. Check out the new costume my dad got me. It costs $200. All right, well, I don't believe you, so I am going to use this opportunity to embarrass you publicly. Well, Disney has it as 32 quid. It's on sale. Down to 24 do you have any comment? No? Just gonna be loud and wrong? All right, fair enough. Wow, that's really nice. All right, Beth, you can be poor, but don't be naive. She's laughing at you. I'm gonna win tonight's contest, so you may as well not even waste your time. Well, probably not, unless this message is gonna be a bit twisted. That's the Darman episode I wanna see, where the poor person gets nothing. Hey, honey, I found this cardboard box in a recycle bin. I thought maybe you could use it for your costume. Oh, God. Not now, Dad. If you're gonna be poor, at least be quiet. <laughs> Good luck on trying to win the contest, Beth the Bum. I am struggling to pinpoint the emotional message here. Are we supposed to care about poor people? Because, well, I'm not starting now. Now, for the moment we've all been waiting for. The winner! The annual Halloween costume contest is... Oh, God. I kind of hope it's the bully just for a massive upset, but I suppose I have to root for the poor person. Beth, the hot air balloon! Well done, I suppose. You know what? This is ridiculous. Come on, let's go. Oh, well, the dad's pretty nice. I guess the mum's a bastard then. You made your costume, but how? My family doesn't have a lot of money, so I had to be a little creative. Oh, I'm feeling so inspired right now. I just want to go out there and treat poor people with respect. All right, maybe I'll start by looking him in the eye. Baby steps, you know. My dad found me a cardboard box to use as my basket. I'm probably supposed to glean another message, but I can't help but think if that dad's got enough time to find cardboard boxes, he could probably pull a shift in the Asda. Stop being so poor and get a job. It isn't about how much you have. It's about what you make out of what you have. Oh, Beth the Bub, you're so right. It's not about what you have. It's about what you have to do with what you haven't got what you do. I love it. Hey, Darman fam. I hope you love that video. So you see, we're not just telling stories, we're changing lives. You're not just changing lives. You're making me want to end it. And on that motivating note, that's all the time I've got for today's video. But if you did enjoy it and you feel so inclined, you can leave me a like. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below in the comment box. And if you want more videos from me, you can always click subscribe. Cheers for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you boys next time. Bye.